Well, Ukraine has thanked Australia for its decision to send ADF troops over to the UK to train Ukrainian soldiers as part of a broader aid package adopted by the Albanese government. Meanwhile, the Treasurer announced in the budget the government would increase our defence spend to 2% of GDP to ensure Australia remained prepared to tackle growing threats in the Indo-Pacific and elsewhere. But in real terms, that's still a drop in the ocean. Joining me now to unpack this is the chair of the Liberal Party Defence and National Security Policy Branch, Lincoln Parker. Thanks for coming in, Lincoln. Thanks, Chris. All right. Ukraine are obviously thankful for what we're doing, but we're taking soldiers out of their country all the way to the UK to train. Is that what they want? Because the discussions that I've had with MPs, those that are in that country, they are just desperate for ammunition and weapons, and that's about it. Well, that's right. So we're sending 70 ADF troops over to train Ukrainians, and we're also sending an additional 30 Bushmasters, which are those fantastic vehicles that we manufacture in Australia. And that'll take the total number of Bushmasters sent to Ukraine to 90, and it'll take the total amount committed to Ukraine by Australia to $655 million. So, and the yeah, Bushmasters have been a roaring success, right? Absolute roaring success. We've yeah. been manufacturing them in Australia for, for years. They have a V-shaped hull, so they're fantastic for roadside bombs. Everybody stays safe. Everybody loves them. So that's, that's a very good thing. But what I would like to see is why aren't the Europeans stepping up and providing more aid, ammunition, money, training and all those sorts of things when it is by far the United States doing the most heavy lifting? Mm. That is interesting, you know. So do you think going there and training is a productive, constructive thing to do? Well, yeah, I think it's constructive, right. but I'm just a little bit worried that in the strategic environment that we find ourselves with China about to invade Taiwan, that we're sending troops, ammunition and money over to the Ukraine. OK, how would you sum up how defence was treated, defence spending in particular, by Jim Chalmers on Tuesday night? Well, he didn't really talk about defence very much and the Albanese government has been talking a big game about not uh, cutting defence like they usually do and that it would remain at about 2%. But as we've seen reported in The Australian recently, well, that's not entirely true because the purchasing power of defence is being slashed dramatically due to the rise in inflation. And the last time we saw inflation... Um, about a month ago when these numbers were run was at about 5%. Inflation's now almost 8%. So Defence's budget is being... Or its purchasing power is, is, is being slashed of by course. about $3 billion, And that's not even including the fact that the government is not hedging the Australian dollar. And the Australian dollar is heading down. It's already in the 60s and it may go lower. So... You know. They talk a big game, though, don't they? But, but yeah, they should be supplementing defence, particularly given what's going on. I get the feeling that the Albanese government thinks any kind of military action in the Indo-Pacific from China is going to come years down the track. Uh, we'll build some subs over the next 20 years. Uh, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Um, that's not what the American military chiefs are saying about China's intentions, are they? It's not what the American military chiefs are saying. It's not what President Biden is saying. And I think it's very dangerous and I think it's reckless of the Australian government not to be having this discussion with the, with the Australian public so that we can be prepared. So just last week, we had the United States Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Gilday, go out publicly. And they don't do this lightly. And they went out, he went out publicly and said... He feels that China could invade Taiwan this year. Mm. This year. That has massive ramifications on Australia, our trade, because all of our sea lines will be blocked. We won't be able to sell coal and iron ore and all those minerals up into China. What happens to the Aussie dollar then? What happens to Australia? What are we doing about it? Why are we not having this discussion? Why isn't Albo having this discussion? You can't just... Put your hands up and pretend it's not happening. And that's what they're doing. It's what they're doing and, and they're hoping that Uncle Sam will take care of it. But we're a sovereign nation. We should be doing that. That is government's first priority is to look after the safety of Australians. What's the whisper within military ranks about the numbers of servicemen and women we have for what we're predicting here? And do we need to think outside the square about numbers, boots on the ground? I know this is going to be a separate you know, um, uh, defence of our country, probably by sea, using drones, etc., missiles. But we've got to have enough human beings operating them. 
Well, we do. So to give you some uh, perspective, uh, in World War I, when our population was you know, much smaller than what it is today, we sent about 400,000 Aussie troops to Europe. In World War II, it was about 600,000. Today, you're going to be shocked by this, but the total combat um, troops available to Australia are 5,000. That's it. 5,000. Really? 5,000 trigger pullers, combat troops. That's it, right? So we need to be... And um, Chief of the Defence Force, Angus General Angus Campbell, wrote just last month that we're missing our targets. We're missing our recruitment and retention targets. Why? Why is that happening, do you think? Well, I think we're not putting enough... Um, effort into trying to recruit more and to retain them and to train them up. And, and at least, I think, also government needs to be involved to say, look, this is a great career. You're going to be learning fantastic skills for life. You're going to be learning leadership, problem solving. Come and, and join the ADF, even if it's the reserves. And we just don't do that often enough. We don't talk to children about those benefits. Mm. And, and I wonder whether the impact of veterans and the Royal Commission and the stories we're hearing about them being just left on the shelf for so many years and not receiving even uh, communication, let alone compensation, I wonder whether that turns school leavers off from joining. No doubt. I mean, you see that we don't take care of our veterans as well as we should be doing that, and we should be venerating them more often than we do, and we should be having that discussion in schools. You never hear about it in public schools. The curriculum is going, you know, to the left side of woke. And we need to be talking about those that have fought, served and died for the freedoms that we enjoy here, and we just don't do that enough. You, you find that in Europe, particularly the United Kingdom and the United States, they venerate their veterans and their armed forces, as well they should. OK, let's take this one step further. If we've only got 5,000 men and women behind guns, is it time that we had a serious conversation about some kind of compulsory service for younger people? Well, it, it may not even need to be compulsory. So we've seen, we've done studies on uh, national and community service programs throughout the world. And we've found in the likes of Scandinavia, they're oversubscribed because of those reasons that I mentioned before. So if you, you, if you want to go and join the Army, Navy or Air Force, you can. If you don't want to do that, you can go and join the SES. We can't keep sending the ADF out every time it rains. Mm. So you can join the, the police. You can join the fireys, whatever, right? So at least you're doing something productive and, and making a contribution to Australia. Now, employers love that because these kids, you know, 18 plus, are taught... Um, principles of teamwork, leadership, yeah. problem solving, and, and employers love that. And you're only doing it for one to two years. Yeah. But then that starts to bolster the force and, and the capacity. it's actually a widespread practice. It's a widespread scheme around the world. 85 countries across the world have some sort of scheme in place. Some, some as short as six months, some up to two years. But I, I really don't think that's... I, I think it's a nation-building, particularly for our youth, to be able to do that and contribute to society. And maybe what we've got to do is stop using the ADF for what we think they're built to do, which is go to floods and go to bushfires, etc. They are not trained for these uh, roles. They're not trained. We've got a very expensive defence force. We ought not to be spending all of that money on and those troops going to clean up floods. So that's what these kinds of schemes would enable. So children and youth... And, 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 you know, 20s, etc., being able to be skilled up, to go and contribute and, and learn those skills and go and look after their communities, not sending the ADF. OK, one quick issue before we let you go, because there's so much in the, in the defence area and national security at the moment. Um, during the week, we've, we've, we've seen the budget increase, but as you say, in real terms, it's just a, a static decision. Uh, what what, what long-term do we need to do tactically? Like, forget about submarines. They're not going to be there when we need them. They just yeah. won't. It won't happen, will it? No. So, so what do we need to do to defend this country and what should we be purchasing? Missiles, drones? Absolutely. The ADF doesn't have a single offensive drone in its arsenal. So we need to be looking at asymmetric warfare, so guerrilla-type warfare, Marine Corps, US Marine Corps style of fighting, because we're going to be fighting across archipelagos and, and islands and that sort of stuff. Um, yes, you're right, subs aren't going to get here for ages. So lots more missiles. We've seen how effective they are in Ukraine. Um, and lots more that sort of Marine Corps style training. Uh, and get onto it now. Get onto it now. It's a now thing. Uh, Lincoln Parker, thank you very much for coming in.